Okay, ready to go. Right, looking at experiments to measure the speed of sound using a resonance tube. We have a resonance tube filled with water, a couple of retort stands to hold it up, and apart from that, we're going to need to measure the diameter of the tube. So we've got a calipers here, and we have got a set of tuning forks. In our case, we're just going to look at one tuning fork, and we're going to do one run. What you would do, but what you would do is you'd multiply that by lots of different, or you would repeat the experiment for lots of different tuning forks. The experiment upon which the uh, investigation is based is basically your experiment which links velocity of sound, frequency of sound, and wavelength of sound. In this case, because we're going to generate a standing wave, it turns out that the wavelength will be four times the length of the tube. It's a tube which is closed at one end, so what's going to happen here is as we lift up the tube, the top of the tube is open, the bottom of the tube is going to be closed with water. Okay? So what we're going to do is we simply strike a tuning fork, note the frequency of it, in this case, we've got one which is a frequency of 512 hertz. So if I break the tuning fork, I'll do it quickly first. In fact, let's take this away from here. So basically, there's a frequency at 512 hertz. At a given length, the frequency of the air inside there is also going to vibrate at 512 hertz. What I'll do is ascertain what exactly is that length. And to set it vibrating, I'm going to put a vibrating tuning fork. Just so I start off by bringing it all the way at the bottom. Breaking my into the water, and then I very slowly get out of there, very slowly raise it up, and there is a notable resonance point right there. So now that I know it's approximately there, ideally I would have a couple of other helpful students, and there are plenty of helpful students when you need them. So we're going to set it up. I knew it was approximately there, so I'm just going to go again to get more exact, and this is what you would do. Start at the bottom, and it's pretty close to right there. So I tighten it up. Now, that is there for vibrating a frequency of 512 hertz. I need to know what length that is, so I come along with a meter stick and measure length. And it's a little bit awkward, so my meter stick is turned away from you, but you're just going to have to take my word on this when I say it's about 15 and a half centimeters. So 15.5 centimeters is my length. I need to measure that. And one other thing I need to measure is the diameter of the tube itself. So in we go with calipers, and it is three pints something. Let's get it out to here. It's about three pints something. And I've got one, two, three, and to find out where the next point is, I look at the second scale and see what I interact with the first scale. Take it out here. Once again, take my words about three pints three centimeters. So now I've got all my measurements, and I can use my formula to ascertain the speed of sound. I've a rough. Uh, I've this done roughly already. Basic formula: c equals f lambda. For a standing wave, the wavelength is four times the length of the tube, but because the diameter of the tube is also a factor, you have to take that into account, and we call it a correction term, and the wavelength is actually four times the length plus 0.3 times the diameter. So you put all that in together, and your speed of sound is four times the frequency from here, and then the wavelength is L plus 0.3 times the diameter. In my case, we measured it here. The diameter was 3.3 centimeters, which is 0 0.033 meters. The frequency of my tuning fork was 512 hertz. That was therefore also the frequency at which the tube was vibrating at that length. Uh, the length then I found out was 15 centimeters or 0.155 meters. And now all I do is put that into a formula. Uh, so it's four times my frequency, which is 512. My length is 0.155 plus 0.3 times the diameter, which was 0 0.033. Work it all out and you get a speed of sound as 337.7 meters per second which is not bad given that the accepted answer is about 336 meters per second. And that's pretty much all there is to the experiment. You would now repeat that three or four different times. In fact, ideally six or seven times, you take a separate tuning fork. So let's very quickly do a separate tuning fork. This was the one we had at 512 hertz. If I take this away and just see what does happen if I use a second tuning fork, you could look at the formula and prove to yourself that frequency here is inversely proportional to the length. So if I've got to the length of the tube, so if I've got a lower frequency, in this case 200 and 256 hertz, because the frequency is lower, I should have a longer length of the tube. So we just go down, and very, we we'll do it rather quickly. And there does seem indeed to be a resonant point up about there somewhere. And then if you want to get more accurate, now that I know it's up about there, it's pretty much exactly there. You tighten that up, and once again, you would measure the frequency, which in this case is 256. So that air is vibrating at 256 hertz. You'd measure this length, and you'd repeat the calculations as before. 
You do this five or six times and you end up with an average. Finally, then, to look at any sources of error, anytime you're looking at sources of error, you need to see, well, what am I measuring? Because the sources of error will be associated with whatever you are measuring. So in this case, I measure length. So I'm going to use a meter stick to measure length. Anytime you use a meter stick to measure length, there's parallax error going to occur. In other words, if that's as close as I can get to the white tube, I've got to decide, well, is that 24? Is it 25? Is it 24 point five six seven? And because you look at it at an angle, parallax error may occur. So standard source of error, parallax error associated, associated with measuring the length of the resonance tube with the meter stick. I also measured the diameter of the tube using the vernier calipers. Because it was a vernier scale, it was pretty accurate, so we can assume that to be OK. Another potential source of error is this tuning fork, which says five, which says in this case 256 hertz. If it has become chipped due to being banged off floors or various different surfaces at different stages, it's going to vibrate at a slightly different level. So the tuning fork may not be exactly as what is indicated on it itself. The frequency of the tuning fork may not be what is indicated. So once again, to find out what we source of error, what did I measure? I measured length, so there's a parallax error. I measured diameter using the vernier calipers. That should be fair enough. And then I looked at the frequency, and the frequency I assumed to be the same as the tuning fork, but there could be a slight problem there. But we did the experiment once, and we got it fairly accurate. Um, one other potential source of error, I should say, is that if we come back to our little uh, resonance tube again, it will vibrate at a frequency here of 512 hertz, but it will also vibrate at a frequency twice that, just up there. So what you've got to be careful is that you start at the bottom and get its fundamental frequency. So you work from the bottom upwards. That's pretty much it. We're done.